Hello. Welcome to my video for this week. Um, gonna talk from Bhagavad Gita from chapter 12 on devotional service and um, talk about meditation and um, yeah, we'll just start with uh, Kirtan. is considered more perfect, those who are properly engaged in your devotional service, or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested. The Blessed Lord said, He whose mind is fixed on my personal form, always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith, is considered by me to be most perfect. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, fixed and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth, by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such persons, engaged in the welfare of all, at last achieve me. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. For one who worships me, giving up all his activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service, and always meditating upon me, 
who has fixed his mind upon me, O son of Prissa, for him I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. And then Krishna says, Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me, thus you will live in me always without a doubt. So, um, I'm doing this for the second time because the class, the microphone didn't work the first time I did it. <coughs> so, what it's what it's saying is um, that there's the personal feature of God and then there's the impersonal feature and you have um, um, a way of approaching God through the unmanifested but that's not really recommended as much like Krishna says that it's troublesome um, and so he recommends the personal um, meditating on the personal form of the Lord um, and um, and then he gives this instruction um, to just fix your mind he says just fix your mind upon me the supreme personality of Godhead and engage all your intelligence in me thus you will live in me always without a doubt and so it's to fix your mind um, there's like different meditation methods and stuff there's um there's the nine processes of devotional service um and the three primary ones are hearing chanting and remembering so that's um so if you're doing chanting um or kirtan or something like that um what you're doing is you're hearing you're doing hearing because you're hearing the sound of the name of Krishna and you're chanting because you're chanting those names and you're remembering because when you hear the name you remember Krishna and um, and then the other devotional practices as well are like um, you can have like serving and um, Priya and serving the deity and other ones like that as well and um, all of those are like ways of um, fixing your mind upon Krishna uh, in those different forms and you can do like any one of those devotional practices and attain the goal of devotional service or um, you can do all of them and um, so how it is to fix your mind like there's different meditation forms and like um, in um, how I look at um, Bhakti Yoga I depend on uh, the Krishna um, the um, devotion is taught by Prabhupada who brought um, Bhakti Yoga to the West and also from Kripalji if you've heard of him some of his stuff is available on um, the internet and stuff as well and obviously Prabhupada um, mostly emphasized chanting of the Maha Mantra chanting the Maha Mantra is a, a primary sort of practice and um, Kripalji um, talked a lot about Rup Dhyan so Rup Dhyan is like another real foundation practice of Bhakti Yoga and um, both of these are ways of fixing your mind on God and um, so yeah basically um, you can practice, you can do chanting and rupyan at the same time 
So your root dhyan meditation is when you um, you visualize God in front of you, and you can you can kind of choose any form that you want, and you can call him by any name that you want. Um, but you kind of um, you call out. Well, this isn't the root dhyan meditation, but this is like one of the most sort of important things in um, um, more like Raganuga Bhakti or s spontaneous attraction is you you just um, you kind of just um, um, yeah you can visualize God in any form that you choose like a male or a female or whatever and call him by any name but then you just call out sincerely and just do that with sort of all your strength and for like um, continuous periods of time so how you would do that um, you would like have to take some time out in your day to just set aside to actually do that practice um, and you could like put some music on or something like that if you don't want other people to hear or it, something like that but you just really need the space to um, just totally be free and really um, let everything go in that situation so that you can really um, put everything into that practice and just um, um, move around or whatever you have to do in that. Um, that's probably like the best so that's like the best thing that you can do that would be recommended by Kripalji is just that sincere calling and um, and then the root yarn meditation is you just like sit down you can um, uh, sit down on like a cushion like cross-legged or on a seat or whatever and then you just um, visualize God in front of you um, and just sort of knowing his presence is there knowing that he's there or her and then you um, you relate to him or her in one of these five primary rasas, which means like you forget that you forget the godliness of God and just sort of hang out and like so you can hang out in a in these different rasas um, which are like um, servitude like as a servant of God or a neutral kind of thing where you can be in a neutrality kind of feeling or um, as a friend to be very friendly or as a parent of, which is sort of to be protective of God or something, or as a partner, and the, being the partner of God is the considered the highest one, and you kind of, um, you can sort of just get um, creative with that meditation, the way that you do that, um, you're kind of meditating and you're fixed in that rasa of what the feeling of that rasa is, and then you can kind of um, you can talk or you can visualize different things that you're doing together or something like that so you can go into quite a good visualization in a, um, in a meditation like this um, what you can do is like pick say um, some pastimes or something from say it was Krishna Leela or something and you um, you were thinking about Govardhan Hill when Krishna picks Govardhan Hill up and all the villagers go under the rock or something so a way that you could visualize and get into that would be that you would and there's heaps of pastimes so there's plenty of material um, you would just visualize this hill being lifted by Krishna and then whatever you actually went in normally the visualization can sort of take over partly in itself but um, if you're receptive to that but what you would do is say you ran under the rock or something like that and you you know you were looking around or you know you can get right into the visualization and but 
um, you can put that rasa that you're feeling within that meditation into the feeling that you've got in relation to Krishna in the pastime. So if it was in the case of him picking up Govardhan Hill and you were in the rasa of friendship or something, then you could be like, um, you know, like joking with Krishna about how he's picking up the rock or something like that. If you can sort of get an idea of the, how this sort of works, like that's, there's a lot of creativity that can go into it. And if you take, all you have to do is take the time out and to, um, do these practices that are actually very entertaining and pleasurable. And that's doing this, what it's saying to just fix your mind upon me. Um, and over time, like the more that you do it, the more that your mind will become fixed and you'll develop that relationship. Um, because, you, you know, there's an element of controlling the mind as well. It's um, Kripalji teaches that um, we're, um, say, in the impersonal, unmanif unmanifested way of reaching God, you would try and get rid of the mind or transcend the mind altogether. Um, in devotional service you use the mind so that's what you're doing you're actually using your mind to visualize these things in relation to God and you can visualize him in the form and stuff like that so you're actually in the mind itself and um, in that devotional feeling and that kind of um, stimulates the um, the attachment so the you're looking to get more and more attached to God in that personal form and um, the more that you get attached the more you can develop love and um, and those things work in polar opposites so like in terms of being attached to the world the more that you're attached to God the less you're attached to the world so all you have to do is attach your mind to God and you won't be attached to the world anymore. And um, so, yeah, so fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. So like engaging your intelligence would be sort of, when I hear that I think about motivation and how what what motivates you in life um, engaging your intelligence would be like looking for the purpose or the motivation behind everything you do and sort of um, curtailing that towards the service of God so that's engaging your intelligence is always thinking in that way how can this particular thing that I'm doing be directed towards God's service or how can I include him in this thing that I'm doing if you know what I mean so sort of engaging your intelligence like that and um, yeah and thus you will live in me always without a doubt so um, that's what I say the, the other how you're doing your meditation and forms like um, when you're doing it just sitting at home or something like that um, uh, if you're not doing anything else that's called I think that's called karma sannyas which means you're not doing any other activities while you're meditating and then the other form of that is your one where you, where you are doing some kind of activities but you're still attached in your mind to God so if that was to just have an example of someone sitting in an office on a computer or something you could be doing your work or something and then you just look up for a moment and like visualize God there you could visualize his form or you might have a particular chosen form or something or you could choose the actual form of Krishna or Radha or something and you just look up for a moment and then sort of connect and then you can go back to your work or whatever and then you just do that more and more um, throughout the day and gradually the mind becomes more and more attached in that way until you can kind of can um, maintain that meditation all the time 
and then you still take the time out to do your karma sannyasa as well but then you can also um, do your devotional practice while you're working and stuff so in other words it's it's very practical and that you can't um, um, one of the main teachings of Bhagavad Gita to like summarize is to attach your mind to God and to do your duty as well so that's like the two things that you should do and doing your duties obviously um, involves all the things that you uh, should do in life that are obligated and um, reading scriptures and stuff will help uh, understand more what your particular duty in life is but um, you could say you had a duty to to work or something like that or you might have a duty to look after your children or whatever but the idea is that whilst you're doing your duty you attach your mind to God and then that's that's the main um, teaching that way you uh, you're also an example for other people of how to um, live correctly which um, yeah, which is something that Krishna even does himself when he comes here. He he lives in a way that is an example for other people, um, even though he's not obligated to do those things. So, um, yeah, obviously, so that's sort of covering root jhan and your sincere chanting, or also ways to do that while you're working and stuff. If you're chanting the mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra, or um, yeah, if you're chanting the Maha Mantra, that's a really good way. And what you can do is, um, while you're chanting the mantra, um, you can do your root jhana at the same time, or focus on the personal feature, or you can um, focus just on the sound of the names. Um, so and then in your mantra and stuff can be really handy because you do your chanting at a certain time in the day you sit down and do your chanting like in the morning or you could do morning and evening or something like that but the more that you do it the more it's spontaneously you can repeat the mantra in your mind that's um or what you can do that's that's ways to um to always keep your mind attached and in that state of remembrance is that you can sort of continuously repeat the mantra and it it um it sort of happens automatically and it's quite a pleasurable sort of thing so yeah that's that's another way um that you can always um keep engaged i think chanting out loud is recommended um but uh, it's not always practical to chant out loud if you're um, again like if you're at work or if you're doing something else then you can just quietly be chanting away and connecting like that while you're engaged in these different activities whatever you're doing like that um, so um, yeah so I think we'll just take a break and then I was going to look at these other things basically Krishna goes into a, some other recommendations if you're not able to do that first instruction but generally that first instruction is um, the primary one but he also has these other things so I'll um, we can come back and you can hear some other things that Krishna recommends if you're if you don't feel competent or enough to actually put that much into um, um, those more heavy forms of meditation or whatever um, so there's other things that Krishna recommends in order to gradually elevate you yourself to that position so they kind of go in a reverse order where he says that and then he says or you can do this or you can do this or you can do this and gives some different things like that so I'll go through what the other things are as well and that's all to bring to the point where um, where you can be in that 
um, fixing your mind and intelligence. Yeah. So I'll just do another um, kirtan, and then we'll come back. Hare 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 Hare